Hey everyone, welcome to Motorola Solutions Live. So I'm just going to wait for everybody to get joined in here while we're waiting. Oh, hitting buttons on the computer. <laughs> Sorry about that. So I hope you all had a great week. Um, it is now the end of the week. It's the end of the first month of 2021. So it's, uh, yeah, we're getting, getting geared up already to head into February. Can you believe January is over already? So we're just going to wait for a few minutes here, and uh, let me make sure I've got my technology lined up. And if you can hear me okay, give me a thumbs up. Let me know everybody can hear me, and um, we'll get started. All right, good. Well, I've got got my guest lined up. He's all ready to go in the back room there. He's pumped up and ready to go. All righty. Let me switch over here real quick to another screen and make sure we've got everything live. Looks like we're, we're live on LinkedIn. I'll mute that. Sounds good. Okay. So again, um, welcome to Motorola Solutions Live. I'm Julio Rodriguez with the video security and analytics team at the Vigilon side. Um, and every Friday we come to you live uh, here on LinkedIn and on YouTube at 2 p.m. Eastern time where we talk about the latest technology from Motorola Solutions. We have a special guest and, uh, you know, we just celebrate, you know, what's been going on for the week and, and the wins that we've had out here Um you know, doing the work in the field and, uh, you know, both personally and professionally that we talk about. So, you know, like I said, it's the end of the month. It's the end of the week. We are done with our first, almost done with our first month of uh, 2021. And um, if any of you out there have anything to celebrate, please put it in the comments. Let us know so that we can celebrate with you. Um, it's something that, you know, for me personally, I'm happy to be one month further away from 2020, putting that all behind us. I've got a new great year ahead of us. And uh, it's going to be something to really look forward to. Um, so this uh, today, we actually have a really, really cool show for you. We've got a new product release from, uh, from Motorola Solutions. And then uh, we're also going to be joined by Mark Hewitt from our uh, access control team. So Mark's going to be talking to us about the uh, Vigilant Access Control Manager and, it, and how it works with Vigilant technology and Motorola technology and, and kind of how all these things plug into each other. So um, we've got some great, great information lined up for you guys today. So first, I want to switch here and talk a little bit about what's going on in the world of Motorola Solutions. So let's switch that there, and we're going to Motorola Solutions News. All right, and I'm going to share my screen so you can see what I'm talking about here. So Motorola uh, just released on the 26th of January um, the Moto Turbo Ion Smart Radio. So I'm going to go ahead and play this video for you. You're just going to see the motion or the, the video image playing. You're not going to hear anything. It's just uh, some background music. And uh, I'm just going to read off what, uh, what they put into the news release because this is really, really interesting. Let me go ahead and play that. There we go. So the Moto Turbo Ion Smart Radio brings real-time intelligent data to existing business workflows. Its fully open Android application ecosystem allows for seamless integration of the mobile data applications that commercial industries depend on, such as those used for enterprise grade barcode scanning, as well as team communication platforms used for messaging, meetings shared, meetings and shared content. A 13 megapixel camera and a four inch high resolution touchscreen lets workers attach photos to work tickets, use video chat for remote diagnostics and view detailed images, schematics, diagrams, photos, and videos. This simplifies device management and security, allowing businesses to move toward the use of a single device that offers the simplicity and reliability of a push-to-talk radio with the additional capabilities of a smartphone, scanner, and tablet. So this is a really, really cool feature or product that I'm excited to see. Um, hopefully, here in the next couple of weeks, um, we'll have uh, somebody here from the uh, Motorola team that was, that's going to show this to us live. So the idea here is that this is going to be something that... Um, where we can see, you know, uh, all the different apps, maybe even the uh, Avigilon video security app or running, you know, the access control manager from the same system where you're having your two-way radio communication and all of those things kind of put together in one. So it's going to be a, a really, really interesting product. So that is our Motorola Solutions news for the week. All right. So let's see if there's any comments here we've got coming in. Nope, nobody yet. All right. So with that, we're going to go to uh, bring on, go ahead and bring on Mark. You know, typically I do an Avigilon feature of the week. Today, 
Our feature of the week is also our guest of the week with uh, Vigilant Access Control Manager. So we're going to bring on Mark and um, see what he has to share with us about the Access Control Manager. All right, here we go. And Mark, you're muted right now. Go ahead and unmute yourself. There we go. Sounds good. Good to see you, man. Hey, good to see you as well, Julio. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, great privilege. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and it's funny when you were talking, it was skipping. And I was like, oh, no, it's, uh, you know, technical glitches, but it, you sound loud and clear. So okay. we're good. Good deal. I appreciate that. Um, so, you know, um, typically we get a lot of our coworkers on here. We get some some of our partners and integrators and we get some of our end users on here. Give me a little bit of a background. You know, I know it personally, but t tell me a little bit about how you came, you know, into this role at Motorola Solutions and, and how you're, you know, where your background in the industry is at. No, thanks, Julio. And actually, you're, you're part of the story. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I met Julio on LinkedIn and, you know, here we're on that platform, ironically. And uh, I used to uh, have my own business in the Columbus area for about seven years. And Columbus, Ohio. Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, there is Columbus, Indiana. <laughs> and, um, you know, just everyone knows being an entrepreneur, the, the different struggles and, you know, trying to grow your business. And uh, Julio, you know, brought to my attention this opportunity with Vigilon. And uh, it, it was a journey, you know, with different interviews and stuff like that. But it's it's been awesome. Uh, you know, I work hand in hand with Julio. So before we were just friends and colleagues bounce things off. Now we, you know, we work on projects together. Yeah. Yeah. We used to run across each other when I was a manufacturer's rep and you were still an integrator and, you know, talking about cameras and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I like that, you know, you, you bring that to the table with, with all this stuff with access control, because you've been the guy with the screwdriver in your hands before having to deal with, you know, calling tech support if something's not working right or, you know, trying to figure out the settings on something. So it, it's, it's a really interesting perspective that you bring to all of this. Yeah, no, and and it's it's great. You know, they call us regional sales managers, but but really, you know, we look at it as solution um, specialists. You know what I mean? Uh, we we try to keep up on on the latest and greatest that Motorola is doing with the Vigilon, and uh, you know, we try to um, you know update our end users or partners about uh, new features being added, and it, it's exciting. I mean, we're on cutting edge technology. Um, you know, there's a lot of players in the field, and and really, what we have to offer, you know, as owning our territory, right, is to, is, you know, develop relationships with people and, and support the product. And so, you know, that's what I hope to do here is obviously just look at it, you know, 2000 feet above, um, not here to do any training on, on vigilance access control, but kind of the look and feel of it, you know, some people may already know some of the features, but, you know, I'm, I'm hoping just to give a broad overview of it. And then obviously if there's more interest, we could dive in deeper at another time. No, it sounds great. Um, so, you know, access control in general is, um, you know, the, the system that controls electronically whether or not you can get into certain doors at certain times based upon who you are and which credentials you hold, right? So, right. you know, just like when people say a camera is a camera, I'm sure you hear a lot of times out there in the field, you know, access control is just access control. You present the card, you know, they, it lets you in or doesn't. That's the end of the story. But you know, tell me, tell me from your perspective, you know, you've, you've had it, you know, the same similar uh, experience with all the other access control systems that are out there. What makes what a Vigilon has that you present to our partners and end users different from just, you know, the, that situation, that commoditized version of, of what I just talked about? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And, you know, we deal with this day in and day out where, you know, different end users have multiple systems across multiple facilities, you know, whether in the same state or, or across the nation. And, you know, the big question is database, you know, how do we update users? You know, I have 10 cards that I have to carry to me to each location. And I, I don't know which, you know, which is which, I mean, and, uh, you know, we really try to streamline that to, you know, with our solution, you know, we have, we, we can be on premise and we also have a virtual um, appliance as well. So, and then we can deploy those in multiple, you know, We've worked on many opportunities, school districts, um, housing authorities, you know, you name it. And uh, we can, you know, boil everything down to one system. And when we have cameras in the mix, you know, I think we really stand apart from our competitors because, you know, the Vigilon manufactures the cameras. We have our own access control and we can provide both solutions under one roof. And, uh, you know, most people have plugins, you know, well, we can work with those cameras, but you got to use this plugin. Right. And, but the supports with another manufacturer. So 
that's you know in a in a nutshell kind of what Vigilant can bring to the table with that unification that we offer. And you know the the big thing I'm I'm going to give uh, one of my bonuses away, but you know Vigilant doesn't charge for that integration. You right. know, so if you already have the camera system or the access control, you know it's not well how many doors you know what what's it going to cost me? Um, it's already built in under the roof. You know? Oh, so there's there's other because I know on the camera side it's it's usually we talk about you know Vigilant doesn't have the annual cost so there's some uh, access control that it's, it's an integration per door cost when you use a third party system. Right. And well, oh, whether wow. it's cl cloud based or, you know, when you want to work, you know, particular how many doors, how many, you know, so let's say there's a hundred cameras, but mm -hmm. not necessarily a hundred doors. You know, there are some solutions out there that you're going to pay per seat on how many camera licenses you need to, to bring in the access control. Oh, wow. Um, so I was, I was aware of that. That's yeah. So, and, and so learn something. You know, <laughs> well, and that's what I'm here for, right? Um, you know, it's just uh, I I love uh, the position I'm in. You know, to to help you know our partners or end users, and and also you know just to be that go between because you know you asked me about being an integrator in the past. Mm -hmm. I had no touches with manufacturers, and and oftentimes they weren't even in this country, right? So yeah, the support was just you know wasn't even worth mentioning it was like we'll figure it out don't don't even bother <laughs> you know that that in a nutshell sure so um give us uh you know go ahead and, and get your screen uh ready to share and uh, kind of give sure. us an overview of, of what it looks like and as you go through just kind of let me know you know if there's something that that stands out about this is this is different for the Vigilon version of it compared to what you've seen, you know, from other access control systems that you've dealt with in the past that may have, you know, required a, you know, its own specific app where you had to load a program onto your computer in order to, to run it or, or to even manage the system. Stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, what I could do is just go, I, I don't want to do a whole uh, opportunity to go through a slide deck, right? But I think yeah. some of the content, um, we do a pretty good job in, in covering our content. And uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. Sure. Um, and again, I, I don't want to um, assume, you know, with our audience that everyone knows, you know, what I'm talking about. Uh, you can see my screen. Yeah, it's just not coming through. Okay. And I'm just going to. Uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah. And, and I'm not going to do full presentation mode. We'll just kind of fly through some of these slides. And uh, just give you an overview. I mean, obviously, Julio has been doing a great job in having guests, you know, each week from WatchGuard. Um, you know, actually, my slide I see is not uh, updated. Uh, yeah, there's, there's more logos on there now. <laughs> right. You know, and I think interesting to point out, right, I've, Motorola, I acquired at least two that I'm aware of um, uh, businesses, you know, during COVID, right? And we, mm -hmm. we've hired, I've heard in the range of 500 employees uh, last year. You know, yeah, not many growing. manufacturers sure. say that, um, you know, Motorola just being a great company to work for, um, you know, did everything they could could do to to keep employees. Right. And even add to, you know, we have we have a lot of more assets now, you know, more engineers that are at our fingertips. So just a couple of things to note. I mean, this list is ever growing. And um, so, again, we're here for access control, but it's it's hard not to talk about our other companies under the umbrella, if you will. Right. And uh, th this would be unique, uh, Julio, with uh, Divisional's access control is that we're browser based, right? Okay. So, um, you know, we, we sit on an appliance much like the ACC NVRs uh, on a Dell server. Mm -hmm. And uh, based on, we, you know, and I can show here in a couple slides, uh, different flavors that we offer, you know, based on the size of the project. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you're gonna access uh, the interface. If it was just access control, if you wanted to get into the identities, um, you just pull up uh, a browser. So just know. Internet Explorer, Chrome, Safari, whichever. Edge, right. We're, we're, uh, oh yeah, Edge. We're, we're device agnostic. So whether you have an iPhone or, or an Android or browser agnostic, right? We, we don't care what browser you use. There's no additional plugins that, to pull up our interface. Essentially, it's like you're looking at a web page. And uh, open platform, again, you know, a visual on solution is non proprietary. Um, can't say that for every other um, manufacturer out there. So again, that's how we're unique. You know, we have great, great uh, integrations with uh, Allegiant, Asa Abloy, Bosch Intrusion, you know, to name a few. And then, of course, 
what you and I work together with is that unification, right? Our, our camera mm -hmm. system and access control. And um, if people don't know already, our, sorry, that uh, just, you, you know, with uh, the time delay, it, it, it likes if you're, if you're inactive. Yeah, uh, it gets mad at you if you don't out. <laughs> keep the screen active, yeah. That's right. So, um, all right, and we're Mercury-based, industry standard, um, non-proprietary. Uh, this is kind of the, the cream of the crop. You know, I anyone who's in the access control industry knows about Mercury panels. Um, this is kind of the, one of the backbones of, of what our, you know, solution um, has. And, you know, very easily to scale, uh, easy to integrate, to install. I mean, I've... Mm -hmm. I have a lab right behind me. I've played with the Mercury panels, even the, the LPs and the EPs, you know, the different versions, just, um, you know, just something to state, you know, as far as what our solution has to offer. Yeah. And, and I've been on some, some conversations and calls with you where, you know, the, the end user and our partners, you know, they have some really different or unique applications like, Hey, can we get this output to do these things and then have this behavior so that it notifies the camera system when this certain event happens? And the answer is always yes yes, here's how we're going to do it. We're going to make it do all these things when, you know, typically the, the uh, off the shelf type um, access control systems, it's, you know, probably not, it's not made for that. It's only made to open and close doors on a schedule for, you know, the people that have credentials. So this is, a, you know, I, I've experienced a lot of the flexibility that this system offers to, uh, for the solutions, for the security yeah. solutions. No, you're right, Julio. It, it's funny. There's even times our, our partners are like, here's a scenario, not that the end user is wanting it, but COVID related. You know, mm -hmm. if we meet max capacity, can we lock down the facility, you know, so we don't. Uh, oh, yeah. I never thought about that one. Yeah. Yeah. And so it, it's, uh, you know, I think just in the industry, I, I'd love, um, you know, when, when questions come across, I'm like, I haven't heard that one. Well, you know, so we work together and, and try to find the best, you know, solution for that. Uh, um, scenario, if you will. And so, sure. and just, just high level, you know, we run off of Linux. Um, mm -hmm. Again, our VM is, is, you know, you, within five minutes, you know, we're unique in how we deploy our access control. If it's a VM, I've done it in less than five minutes. You know, again, some other access control systems, you have to do SQL database, you know, it, you, I, I've heard hours to just deploy, really? you know, a solution where, um, it's just, uh, you know, and even updates too. I mean, even like a major update from five to six right now, we're at 6.14. Right. But um, depending on the size of the database, it, it really is um, so easy to use and to deploy updates. Um, we had, I think, eight eight updates last year. And they weren't just, you know, hey, little bug fixes. I mean, we, we did bring in some COVID solutions, contact tracing, mm -hmm. uh, just some more features on the back end, things that, you know, uh, our users would see very helpful, you know, because we listen to our users, you know, hey, this would be really nice. And, and we take note of that. Right. And um, we're, we're constantly trying to improve our solution. Sure. So um, that's kind of, you know, the nuts and bolts just here depend on the size of the opportunity. You know, we're going to we have a professional enterprise and enterprise plus, you know, we can do up to 248 door, 2048 doors. OK, so and, it uh, just kind of goes up in, in door count, depending door on. Count. Okay. Right. And what then you can see the enterprise, right? It's, it's got SS, uh, D raid, um, raid five configuration, SSD drives, you know, it's got dual Ram as opposed to eight gigabytes of Ram and then dual power supplies, you know, on our cream of the crop server. And right. then that would be the three flavors. And I talked about four and then we would jump over to our ACM, uh, virtual appliance. And again, this, I, I can't tell you how many times I've spun this up, you know, just on my test atmosphere very easy to do right uh, now now how do these work in conjunction with the that mercury panel that you talked about so this these servers hold the the database of information and it's running the application and the those mercury panels do what how do they work I, together great great question and uh you know and so our solution is obviously on these servers and then we talk to the panels right so when we configure the back end you know we're pointing we're registering the panels, you know, whatever the IP scheme or VLANs are set up, you know, through the IT team. And essentially, you know, we're pushing to the panels at the different, you know, closets, if you will, or if it's on the edge, if we have, you know, like a 1501, which is a Mercury POE uh, intelligent controller, mm -hmm. you know, there's memory stored on there. So in the event that um, a server would go down, a network would go down, all credentials are stored 
at the door level at that controller. So you still okay. so still function pro you know normally like you would. From those mercury day. panels are holding the the credential information even though the the server has the master database of all that, but it's constantly updating all of those door the mercury's are, are the door controllers but they also have that information locally so that because uh, i know in one uh project that you talked about um we had a uh it was it was a college with multiple it was a, it was a professional business college or medical college and they had uh different sites in different cities but they wanted to manage it all through one server so depending on how their network was set up they'd be able to have one centralized server and have all these door controllers living out in their business network all over the place without having to have a, a server at each, at location. A, at each, at each right. location. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you see that all the time too. Some systems that are more intrusion, but can kind of do access control, you know, and they're only limited to, let's just say 32 doors. But mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen systems deployed in 500 doors and it's, it's really an intrusion solution but they're able to do access control, but you have multiple databases, multiple servers, and it frankly is a nightmare to, to manage. And, uh, you know, we can achieve that with one, right? And I mean, and, and honestly, we even have some partners of ours that set up VM in, you know, in their data center and uh -huh. they can deploy, you know, small business um, solutions and manage it all, you know, and, and charge, you know, charge X amount Oh, that's, um, that's like, so they they yeah. work like the centralized exactly uh, so they're for their clients right the right and and that's the you know i guess holy the the scenario right it's we can get creative on how to deploy it especially our partners right i mean they're they're in this programming it deploying it to you know customers and um you know like hey we, we set it up this way where we're managing everything we'll send out custom reports you know on a weekly basis so you know some end users they you know, hey, I have five doors. I really just don't want to deal with anything. Can mm -hmm. you guys manage that? So um, there's a lot we can do with our solution. And then, you know, unless you have any other questions, just, no, just as we call together. I'll, right? I'll stop you if I have a question. You know me. <laughs> I'll pipe right up. Yeah. So, and again, the big thing is, you know, we talk about databases. Again, we we have uh, collaborations, which are additional licenses, but it's it's one time. So, you know, it's a perpetual license. You pay for the license if you know schools are big on active directory so we have right. an LDAP integration and you know it's very granular with active directory they don't have to be in you know in our uh, access control manager you know doing onesies twosies or um trying to update the database in that fashion right they can use harness active directory and push whatever they want you know to to give those credentials to you know whether it's the hr or, or um you know admins in the building so it's right. it's it's just really and and most most other solutions do have you know have some kind of database integration, um, but that's that's a big one that we often are pushing is the LDAP, and then SQL Server, Oracle database, and and CSV is is native. So you know, think of just the uh, an Excel spreadsheet. You know I can export out, populate that Excel sp spreadsheet, and then import it in, and I'll populate all the identities within our oh, system. Okay, so if like if you're switching over from an old old system and that's all that you can kick out you don't have to go back in if you got if you bought an vigilant system you wouldn't have to go back in and rekey or recreate everybody's roles and, and stuff like that you'd be able to grab it a little bit more wholesale than that right right exactly kind of do the heavy lifting because you know it, it all comes down to you know new system the database what system are you currently using if we can export um you know that and that's where we harness our our support and our engineers to see what's what's you know best way that we can deploy you know all the all the users if you will into our system but you know once that's done it all the heavy lifting um is done and in fact i'm going to give a short story I, I had a school district call and you know he, he honestly said you know i haven't really been in your system for you know like a year or something he goes it just works you know what there I mean? you go that's yeah. the best endorsement you can hear exactly i don't I need like, to mess with it it just works <laughs> It's magic. So, right, right. And, you know, as obviously when you expand and, and grow that system, add doors or, or new users, right? Again, I didn't get into the details of, you know, who's managing Active Directory and so forth. But, mm -hmm. you know, it just shows, you know, here's one of our end users just calling like, hey, I, I want to do this. How do I do it? I, I just, I don't really have to touch your system that often. So I, you know, I'm, I'm not playing in it as much. Right. Maybe I should. I don't know. But so right. it just, you know lends itself. And then we have an open, uh, an API tool 
you know, if, if people want to get creative, we, we do have some partners that um, push to different, you know, uh, should I say end users, right? That they, especially with COVID, I mean, they wanted to work with third party software developers, you mm -hmm. know, to do these health screening. Um, you know, we can do that with visitor management, but, um, you know, just uh, we give that that option, um, you know, to have a open API. Sure. And then uh, just just going to touch on again, Bosch, you know, as as Julia knows, oftentimes a lot of these RFPs that go out for bid. I don't think my hasn't switched over my screen. No? Did it lock up? Oh, there, there it goes. Go. Yeah. Uh, so we can we already talked about ACM and ACC. Uh, mm -hmm. And forgive me, that's our Vigilanza. Uh, you know, uh, our access control manager and the um, Vigilant Control Center. Control. Yeah. Thank you, a Vigilant Control Center. We can also bring in if if Bosch is on the table, we can bring in through uh, IP based uh, oh, on their the, intrusion panels. Right. So so now, and, and Holy and I worked on a pretty big opportunity that had Bosch integration. So oh yeah, for the housing authority, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and there's no hardwire; it's all IP based. So so I, what what does that do when you when you connect the intrusion system to the access control system? Now you're getting what sort of information that's that's now living in the in the Avigilon world well, from the from the burglar alarm panel. No, thank you. Sorry, I'm I'm, I'm like so excited. I'm trying to. <laughs> I, I can't hold back. So forgive me. Um, no, great question. Uh, you know, it has to do with the users within the system. Uh, you can arm and disarm. You know, again, you can do. You know, we we usually give you three ways to do something and whatever mm -hmm. makes the most sense and you know in streamlining the best processes. You know, for you know, security officers or, you know, for the last person leaving out uh, the building, right? Make sure mm -hmm. that they arm it or put it on a schedule. Right? So you can have it so that the access control swipe would either arm or disarm the panel. First person in scanning their card would disarm the panel, that kind of thing. Is that yeah. what you're talking so, about? Okay. So we have, we can monitor the intrusion events, right? And then uh, we can arm and disarm uh, again, natively in the software. Again, because you, you're bringing all those points, those areas into our access control and and then it's just a very affordable license right mm -hmm. and, and like i was talking about oftentimes bosch is spec um so a lot of times that's on the table as far as intrusion um here you can control and filter intrusion areas like i mentioned we can send events from the central station over um uh, we can send our access control to the monitoring station because right obviously with intrusion they're they're being monitored by a third party um, right and then we can also trigger live events, you know, much like an access control and a Vigilance ACC, we can, you know, pop up video. So this is like if uh, somebody's glass break detector gets triggered, you can start streaming live video from a camera that you've associated with that glass break detector that's going to show that area without anybody having to kind of turn on the system. They they got notified by the burglar alarm system that something was happening. Now they have to go pull up the cameras. This is where it's it's part of that um, Vigilance uh, or Motorola Solutions detect, verify, and respond, where now it's it's doing all of this on its own, and it brings a person in because it's already notified you that this, this event's happening, and it's showing you what's where it's at and what's going on right now without you having to start you know digging around and logging into multiple systems. That's right, yeah. And I'm going to, um, since, since I got my time expired i'm going to go ahead and log in sure um i figured you know i don't really have too many slides after that but you know this lends itself as you're talking about you know pushing uh here we can push um events in our access control manager over to the vigilance control center and mm -hmm. it's it just makes things so much easier and then you know whether we're doing it to motorola radios sending theirs alarms you know to the radios or to text or, or email notifications so let me go over here, right? And then here's, you know, and I know people have uh, seen this, right? As you've done your demos, this is, mm -hmm. I got a little bit of both. I have my demo environment right here. And I also pulled up one of the cameras from headquarters, you know, on our intercom speaker. Okay. So and, what's, uh, what's this on the upper left-hand side? Is that, so we're, we're in a Vigilon video camera software, the ACC, right? That's here, right? correct. Okay. And then you've got where one of the cameras Typically, as you've opened up a web page that has you're logged into your demo at your office, or is this uh, that that's the right? Demo so, site? so if you see, you could probably see my hand here, right? Yeah, this is a live camera right behind me. Okay. And, um, so what I did is just you know I just created a you know 
that this security dashboard can be highly customized, you mm -hmm. know, to users, to locations, depending on, you know, how you want to use it. Uh, again, some instances, people don't want to see a visual. They just want to be notified. Um, right. We can do that as well, right? But just kind of showing you, um, I'll give you, an, for an example, if, uh, if a door was forced, right? Mm -hmm. When we talked about getting a video pop up, this is what that would look so, like. So forced door means somebody's opened a door with, without having credentials to come in. Right, or someone actually opening up the door. Right. Up the when door, it's locked, no credentials. And, yeah, it's locked. That, you know, okay. gaining access to the facility without proper credentials. Gotcha. Okay. So, so I can, uh, I, I don't really have to show you from, but I can push a button here. Um, here, you know, this this camera is associated, right? Uh, to you know, that's my back door, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. And so immediately, I can put my mouse over here. I can double click. And here I have access to that camera from a four store immediately. Again, we can push out those alerts or alarms, you know, through a Motorola radios. We can also do it through a text message or, or an email notification. Right. You know, and, so the, and then um, push notification on the mobile app for the camera system would take that if it's creating an alarm in ACC in the access or in the uh, Vigilon control center video management system that's a mouthful uh <laughs> yeah but um the, and, and kind of you know i was thinking just that that motorola radio that i just showed the new ion that's got both so it's got the radio and it's got the android uh smartphone you know style device built into it so if it's running the vigilon video um, Ace mobile app then we could do a push notification or the radio alert either or or both to that uh to that device and they could actually pull up you know the security guard could pull up the video on his uh on his radio and absolutely yeah and you your audio broke up a little bit so hopefully it's it's on yeah. my end and not yours i'm just um it seems like it, it is it crackling solved. again so, yeah okay um and i, I want to make sure i didn't get logged out okay so here we go yeah and then well that's interesting oh okay let's do this I was pulling up that other one. Yeah, I've, I've yeah, seen it happen. Right. And, and also, the, it very well could be that, you know, they're moving from uh, Plano, Texas over to the new uh, manufacturing plant in Allen. So some of the some of the cameras are physically being taken off the, the outside of that building uh, this week and next as they uh, transfer the system over to the new uh, the new manufacturing plant. Yes. And and, you know, just going on to a pop of the alert. Right. And I know you've talked about our focus of attention mm -hmm. here again, that back door that I forced just by triggering a button, you know, we can get to appear in our focus of attention, uh, which is right here on my screen. And, and I have set up for like a comment, right. You know, to, uh, <laughs> so Sh Sean, <laughs> who just happens to be the Motorola, uh, one of the Motorola, uh, radio guys here for our territory has, uh, you know, Put in the comments ion radio provides optimal viewing of video remotely nice. thank you for that little plug of the motorola ion device <laughs> yeah and, and um yeah and it's interesting that you know i'm pulling um our yeah uh, it, it very well could have been taken offline that camera could have been taken oh, offline they're, they're yeah, working I, on it now I, I saw one camera that i pulled up video and the last video it had was some guy like you know with the screwdriver doing like this to this to the screen because yeah. they were they're working on the system right now yeah, and I'm going to say uh, I just got logged off of the Plano demo site. And that that's kind of one of the reasons, you know, we have all of our sales reps using it, you know, demoing yeah. it. So it's always nice to have uh, my test environment behind me because, uh, you know. Oh, yeah. We have uh, backups for our backups. I've been in basements, at, you know, basements with no Wi-Fi connection before and had to switch <laughs> over to, uh, to video clips that, you know, it's like, oh, yep, that's yeah, not working right now. Uh, yeah, that's uh, fine. Oh, there it goes. It's back. It's back. Yeah. So, and then, you know, with the beauty of this unification is when we port and, and marry the two systems together is as you can see here, right, um, right here on the window pane, uh, I'll blow it up here bigger. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, I can, I can grant access, you know, obviously with our H4N intercom camera, we can have that two way audio, you know, now it's with uh, SIPS, right? We have mm -hmm. that integration, you know, just showing the ease of use. I mean, all I need to do is grant access and I can also, Put multiple doors just on this video screen so i don't have to have like since i'm managing five doors five mm -hmm. screens i can port those all over to one video camera and you know i can literally grant access by clicking a button and and that door is open nice and, and i like how that intercom piece is kind of the you know that's the perfect overlap to 
your system and mine and, and when they start working in conjunction with each other because it's the camera that opens the door. Exactly. Exactly. And you have that. I mean, you know, especially in COVID and, and trying to monitor who comes into the building, you know, if it's a guest and they, they filled out their health report, right? Mm -hmm. um, they might come into a vestibular, you know, where again, you know, they have to do a temperature scan, whatever, you know, the process is that that, that organization has, you know, we basically control, you know, with access control, the doors, right? If, if we want that to be on the schedule that the front door is open or, you know, again, um, depending on how granular we want to get in, in the mode of operation, right? From day to day, or, you know, there's a snow delay, you know, we can set up global actions, which I'm trying, which I have here. Again, this, this can be programmed. Uh, I don't have it here, but you know, whether it's a snow schedule, um, I can right. also grant access to a door right from a click of a button. I don't know if okay. you heard that, but my yeah. mercury panels. Yeah. So is that, um, so that's kind of what I was going to ask you about. So, what kind of information can uh, the camera system show? Like when you have all of this pulled up in the camera system, you've got to get the video intercom from the front door, you've got a camera watching the door. And then tell me about what's going on in the upper right hand corner with where it's got your picture and then the unknown identity. Yeah. So let me, let me see if I can, uh, and that's get uh, visual verification, right? So I should have um, a card here. Uh, oh, that's my front door. Actually, let me, I'll, I'll do this. So I, you know, on this screen here, right, we have, mm -hmm. uh, I have a mobile credential. So what I'll attempt to do is um, show you, we can get a visual verification of who that person is when they present their badge or mobile credential. So here, we'll, we'll just try this and I'll show you here is when I did present my card to the front door, it'll pull so, up. So that picture is your badge picture from the access control system. That's correct. In okay. now we're seeing that in your ACC system. Right. So it's coming through in the video system. So it's sending that data over so you can compare the person's identification credential, you know, image to the video of the person that just scanned that image. Or if you had to go back in time and find out, was that Mark holding Mark's card? That's right. That's right. And and then even deeper dive, right, is, as you've shown, uh, taking that identity credential, right, verification, and then doing an appearance search on on me, you know, by my badge, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and do a search, you know, where I've been throughout the facility. Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. I might use the front door, but then we can harness the, the AI with our camera solution and find out, you know, where I was within the facility. And I know on our demo kits, right, we're only exterior, so right. it's hard to show that. Um, but here, I'll, I'll just give you an example. So, um, uh, hey, Siri, open up Connect. Oh, hold on, I'm not a... Uh, we have uh, Motorola locks our phones, right? So in order to <laughs> open my phone, hey, Siri, open up Connect. I don't see an app called Connect. <laughs> I knew it was going to do that. Um, so here, you know, usually I basically present it and... It should update my identity. There it is. Here. Yep. Oh, well, again, I'm having an in, inactivity. So, yeah, it, it came up on the top. There, there it is. Yeah. So, typically, so you know, that mobile connection is that the NFC uh, near field communication on your, on the back of your phone that's doing that? Is it yeah. The, well, it's Bluetooth. So, Bluetooth? I, oh, okay. Yeah. So, that, um, that reader is a far point reader. Um, nice. You know, obviously, we have HID and, um, and other solutions, but th this one is what I have on my demo kit. And, you know, oftentimes, you know, Hey, I could have it in my pocket, obviously in my demo environment, I have to unlock my phone, but you know, HID, you can keep the phone in your pocket or you can do the twist. You know, they all mm -hmm. have a little bit difference how you present the mobile credentials to the card reader, but this is a long range reader. So I could be like 15 feet out. Not that that really enhances security because obviously you want to be closer up to that door. Well, that's if you, if you have like a vehicle or something like that, you could, it, you know, like a gooseneck at a parking garage or something like that. That'd be more conducive to something like that. But uh, no, that's really interesting. So um, we've got where you can show the video of the person. We've got their identity coming through on the camera system from, uh, from the access control system. Um, what other types of events do you normally see people want to get kind of all in one screen that they 
used to have to jump around for in the past. Like, oh, wait, I've got this type of event happening. Now I need to go find the video of it. What, what do you have you seen that, you know, in your meetings where people are asking for, hey, I wish this when, when I put these two camera systems together that I could see this this type of thing? Well, I, I think, you know, one of the things and, you know, just going over the software, which, you know, which is nice about uh, ACC, um, the VMS platform is it's tab based. So we know all of our browsers are tab based, whether it's Edge or Chrome. Right. So I can get different views and I don't have to close this window to go to the next. I can literally just create the different views I want. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, since I'm looking at access control, I don't necessarily need to look at all the cameras right now. So I'm going to say view four, right? I just double clicked on my uh, URL, which is linked to the access control manager. And now mm -hmm. I'm just looking at access control. And so, you know, just a little bit of the overview for the most part, end users are only going to be in this monitor identities and reports, right? right. The, the physical access and the roles are, are what are, you know, administrators and integrators would probably be messing around in that in those menus. Exactly. Often. Okay. Exactly. And um, so, so alarms, you know, just for example, is something that may be up on the screen. Um, and we can change this when you log into the system, if you want, if, if alarms is kind of what you want to know about, because you know that someone's getting into a door. Yeah. Uh, and I've seen some security guard uh, stations have this view pulled up because they just want to see, you know, the, the kind of the events as they flow through, if a card was granted access and then, you know, then the red events, you know, forced door or somebody's card was denied. And it could be a programming problem. Like they were supposed to have access right. to that door and they don't have it. But this, uh, this is a really popular view. I've seen uh, uh, some people have up pulled up when, when I go to look at the camera system, this is kind of one of their little corner views for the access yeah. control. Right. And, and if there is a security officer, right, we, we can get granular and, and be able to click that, the notes, right? Like, so again, most people know how to respond with a different alarm event, right? Mm -hmm. So here I just created some instructions, call 911, you know, report incident. Um, so that's kind of an instructions tab there. But we also have, once this, uh, we have notes, right? And so if we want to, you know, kind of keep a paper trail on different events, you know, in the wee hours in the night. So those operators need to put in notes, you know, how, how it was dispatched, you know, how it was remedied, and uh, if it was a false alarm, right? So all this we can get very uh, granular here um, with our notes. And again, I'm doing this. I'm doing the access hey, control part. In hey, you're still the, inside of the camera system. That's I'm that's out, the camera that, system. That's my favorite part of all this. You don't have to leave the camera system to, to manage your access control system and to operate it. It's something you just switch tabs and, and you're you're right there. Absolutely. So, and then you know, in this kind of what you're talking about here. I mean, obviously I can put in a note, but I can go ahead and acknowledge all these and we can mm -hmm. color code these alarms, you know, to any color we want, whatever makes sense. And again, mentioning each user, you know, given that whatever admin rights they have, you know, what they have access to within the system, you know, maybe an operator, um, you know, they don't need to be able to, to, to add doors or change doors, right? So we can lock them out. So we can get very granular on, on the type of user you know, that has delegations, if you will, is, that's what we call it within the system. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so everyone doesn't have free access to start shutting doors down. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, you don't want everybody to have the big red button to lock down the whole facility. Um, so, you know, this is kind of the live reporting. What about, you know, at the beginning of the week where the manager wants to see any sort of events that popped up from last week? No, great question. And then I think that's a huge aspect of, uh, you know, an access control, right, is how do you get visibility into what's going on? I mean, you know, at, at, on a live view, right, like we showed, but we can get, you know, autonomous, if you will, is take certain reports, you know, email them every Monday morning at, at 8 a.m. You know, oh, so the system will send out reports on a regular cadence for you? Right, right. You don't always have to. I mean, if you want a quick view, let's just say, uh, and I'll show you here. Well, for example, identity, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'll just grab myself. Um, Mark, we can do an audit like on the spot, like, hey, I just want to see where Mark has been in the past hour. Okay. Um, so I go ahead and open up, um, you know, my my identity, which we call it identities in uh, ACM, right? Sure. And it's just people in the system. And then I can just click over on this tab, uh, audit. They're just going to show a quick little view of what 
you've done recently. Okay. Exactly. This your is most sure. recent transactions. You're correct. Right. And then if, as we want to dive in deeper, right, then we'll go to the reports. Um, and we can do that. Not that I wanted to jump out of there, but just kind of show you the process that if it's, you know, depending on the situation, if you want to look into someone, do an audit trail real quick, just grab on that individual's identity. We have, I believe it's 27, uh, reports baked into our system. You can change the, you know, do the filters and then save it as a, a custom report and then do a batch file so that, you know, it's on a schedule. So every Monday or every Friday, right, you're, you're getting an alarm report and then you sure. read through that. And we do it in a PDF or, uh, you know, Excel sheet. So you can get real granular, which Holy was pretty savvy with uh, Microsoft Excel. So, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm king of the PowerPoints. Actually, <laughs> junior king of the PowerPoints. Danny Lynch uh, is king of the PowerPoints. He's got me beat. I, I, will, I, will <laughs> I, I will second that. Um, so this is kind of uh, everything going on in our system, you know, whether it's an audit trail, you know, events, um, holidays, right? You want to see what holidays you have set up, you know, and, mm -hmm. and that leads me on to, you know, here, I'm not going to get too in depth, but here's how we create our schedules, right? And our holidays. So again, um, you know, giving people access to the doors or group of doors, right? On a, on a certain schedule, you know, whether sure. that's some building, you know, that's used for the commissioners, right? And every Wednesday at seven o'clock, you know, they need to get access to the door. So we'll open that because the public has access to it. And then on a schedule, make sure that's locked. So this is how we get into our schedules. You know, and it's oh wow, that's very, that's really really granular, right? We can get it, you know, Sunday through Friday, and then we can even like you have a lunch break, we can, you know, make sure that it goes from unlocked to lock, back to unlocked. So all this can be done, you know. Like I said, once once you have that basic routine, and then we, you know, can change some some policies and stuff if if we have to change things on the fly, you know, so someone's not pulling their hair out trying to think, you know, how do I change the schedule, and um, so that's kind of how we uh, set up things for, for different doors or group of doors uh, on a schedule. Um, we talked about the monitoring, you know, the events, the alarms, uh, the dashboard really, you know, this is an overview of the inputs, the outputs. If there's any troubles in the system, we can have a bird's eye view right from the screen. And, sure. um, you know, and even too with our power supplies, like uh, we only sell life safety panel and they literally, our, our top notch, the, the Maserati, you know, the, the right. Lamborghini power supplies. And, and if you go on the managed route, you know, you can have visibility, even pr predicting, you know, when, when a, a strike might fail. So we can definitely get, you know, so this is something guy. that the IT manager would have up kind of checking the functionality or monitoring the functionality of what, uh, what each, each device on the, on the system is doing. Right. And, and just show, I don't, I have a Bosch panel here, um, up on the wall, but I haven't, I haven't had time to, to play with it and integrate it into my system, but this is what that would look like. You know, you have areas, um, points and outputs. So gotcha. again, this is how easy having that intrusion integrated into access control and ACC. Very nice. So on kind of going back out when you were flipping through the, one of the menus i saw maps so we had the map the outside view map so um i know sometimes uh some of our uh, users will have uh, indoor maps or they'll have floor plans laid out with you know all the doors opening and closing um i guess it's, it's just another way to have you know to arrange everything to show what's going on in your facility yeah and and like just to show you kind of real uh quick right like so well let me close that just to I'll create a tab here, right? Um, I don't know. We'll go to images, right? Um, but say, for example, you know, we need to create a, a custom security uh, dashboard. Mm -hmm. And let's just, just put, pick this, for example. Sure. And see, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and save that image. Uh, that's on my desktop. I'm going to switch over here, I think. So that map that I showed earlier, mm -hmm. I'm just using a template right here. And, and again, we can 
we can do this in Photoshop, whatever. And, and, and I usually help our partners and end users, like if they want something customized with their logo and stuff, like, you know, we can do that. Sure. And, um, so this is just a quick, easy way to, to bring in an image into a, into right. a template and then add those buttons. So the actual name isn't the button. There's those little circles next to it. Those are the buttons that we use to there, create some sort of behavior. That's right there. Um, and I'll just not not to labor, but I'm just showing how easy this is to perform yeah. this function. Um, uh, let's see here. I don't know what I um. I don't know if I saved it as. No, that's not <laughs> it. But um, essentially, I would just overlay. The, oh, it was the floor plan. That's right. Yeah. Um, but just having said that, these buttons, like you were mentioning, Julio, are global actions, right? And they're programmed in access control. So this is basically a JPEG image. And then I, you know, when I create a new global action, you know, again, lockdown, let's, let's just do that. For example, when I click that button, that's not part of the image. It's actually part of our program. Right. And then, so that red lockdown, just locked down all the doors on the system, whatever system you have this connected to. So I see yeah, the logos right. changed on the map. And now if you present your card, everybody's getting denied. Right. And, and if I go back here, Right. My uh, my reader should be flashing wait here to uh, yeah. it snaps. Right. So now I know my system is in lockdown just with a click of a button. And if I double click this again, I have a global action to restore. You know, everything's good. We need mm -hmm. to put the, you know, facility back in normal operation. I have a global action here again, pre-programmed. Those bounding boxes disappear. Mm -hmm. Go back to our readers. Everything's back, and I can present my card and get in through the building. Which I want to show you too. Another way we can do it, just since we're talking about lockdown, is we, you know, we can create a red card, right? I can come up to the system, present my card to a reader, and you'll see here in a second um, all the uh, readers are blinking. So another way yeah, that we can all lockdown, just with someone has a credential to the nearest reader present it and then i can present that card um you know back to the reader and then restore into normal operation and then we can wow. do physical buttons i can show that but again there's a couple ways we can do it and, and some people you know want a physical button underneath the desk sure yeah there's kind of that under desk panic button that shut right, the whole so. shut the whole thing down now when you do the lockdown can since you're able to be so flexible with this, can you have it so there's like first responder cards that can still open during a lockdown? There's everybody except these people are, you know, subject to the lockdown, that sort of thing. So you could have multiple tiers of lockdown. Right, exactly. And we can uh, get very granular. Exactly. I mean, we could do it so no one can get in, not even the administrators mm -hmm. and, or, you know, like you said, EMS, um, you know, police authorities. So we could give them credentials or even a mobile credential, right? That they could present and um, be able to get into the building, but no one else. So yes, that definitely, uh, we see that all the time. You know, we, we call it a green card, red card, right? Sure. Um, so so when you do a lockdown, can you also have like, you're locking down different sections or just locking down outside doors only kind of like a yellow lockdown is just exterior doors and interior still. Okay. You can do stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Right. And again, it's not one size fits all. I mean, it's kind of, you know, and that's kind of, you know, the scope of looking at what's what's important to you. Um, you know, do you want just exterior doors or even interior? You know, as we know, I, I believe and correct me if I'm wrong, is it in Kentucky, right? Schools are requiring, you know, some kind of lock on interior doors. Yeah. Yeah. We've got the uh, Senate bill one. There's a school security bill. I think it's by 20 end of this year, beginning of next. They have to have all these different uh, different things set up for, uh, you know, just overall school security and that's one of them yeah and you know just speaking of and then you know we talk about interior doors right we we kind of lead the industry um i'm gonna say that because i unless you know i'm proved wrong with wireless lock integration you know here i just happen to have a, a schlag nde lock right mm -hmm. sitting right there and you, you can see it uh you know the strike isn't moving right, right? i'm moving so i'll present present my credential uh, did that? I did not. Yeah, yeah, it's it's working. I saw it move. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Oh, it's a little bit delayed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So again, we we have ways, you know, um, to to look at interior doors. I mean, obviously, being a pass integrator, I'm all about being a hardwire guy. But we know right. 
you know, wireless locks really have, um, you know, IDF a long, boxes. long way. They, they have, and, and we get all the reporting. I can, I can lock down a wireless lock. So mm -hmm. just showing that, you know, we get the reporting too from it. So it's, it's basically like a reader built into the lock, you know, in all right. intents and purposes. Anything else you, uh, yeah. I no, mean, I mean, I, I've been asking you questions that I've been meaning to ask you, honestly, <laughs> to, you know, during me, it's like, Hey, can we do that? Cause you know, uh, you know, we, we both come across camera, the camera opportunities and, and access control opportunities almost interchangeably as we talk to everybody out in the marketplace. So it's, it's interesting to, to learn, you know, how you present it on how you show this to, uh, to end users. Um, how can people get a hold of you if they have any questions about the access control and in which territories or which areas do you cover here in the United States? Uh, no, thank you, Julio. So, a um, little, little bigger uh, sandbox than Julio has, um, and that's why we work together. So, I am the regional sales manager uh, for all of Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, and Western Pennsylvania. So, many of uh, Julio's counterparts, um, I work hand in hand with, you know, in three and a half states, if you will. And, you know, I'm always available to, to do a demo, you know, remote, of course, or in person. And, you know, anyone that is interested in seeing diving in deeper, you know, to some of the features, you know, we could do that at a, at another time. Um, but no, sure. this, this was, uh, I appreciate the opportunity. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody that has a door would probably be a good, you know, potential uh, end user for you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, here I'll, I'll finish. Uh, right. There we go. Exactly. If you have a door and, um, you know, you want no to be control able to who comes in and out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you want to keep your brothers and sisters out of your room? No. <laughs> yeah. Well, trust me, I I, uh, I have a large family, so. Uh, yeah, I, I know you'd understand my pain with that fight. It's like I, I've almost been really tempted just go ahead and put an access control system on the kids' rooms. Okay, right. and keep brother and sister out, and maybe even on the refrigerator and the cabinets to control well, the grocery bill a little bit. That's true, and, and well, also too, <laughs> hey, you have to socialize with uh, your family. Yeah, you know, you're not allowed in your room from yeah. you know from six o'clock to uh, eight thirty, and then yeah. Like, Right. So I've, I've had to learn how to uh, to modify. I actually had to learn how to filter the domain name server for the house Wi-Fi to keep my kids off the gaming sites so that they would interact with other people because they would just go from the from the computer to the mobile device, take right. away the mobile device. They'd go play a game on the TV. It's like everything's connected. So, OK, you know, had to have the big red lockdown button for the well, uh, for the Internet at the house. No, and I have the mobile app right from my router, and uh, apparently my son figured it out, and I was like, <laughs> you know, how's he playing? And yep. yeah, I had to have that conversation, but um, no, Good really deal. awesome. I appreciate the opportunity to, to visit with you, and, um, you know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk again for sure. Yeah. Thanks, well, everyone. I appreciate you coming by, and, um, you know, hopefully as, as we get new products coming out from both the camera side and the access control side, we'll revisit this again and talk about different new and exciting things that are coming out. Because I know you said you did, what, eight? We did eight releases last year of the access control manager. That's right. And I, I, I want to say, was it eight with uh, ACC as well? Yeah, it, it was a big number with, you know, with all the COVID analytics and stuff like that. So hopefully we'll have you back here in a, in a few weeks and we'll talk again soon. Awesome. Thanks, Julio. Right, hey, thanks, Mark. Talk to you soon. All right, everybody, that was Mark Hewitt with uh, the ACM team at Motorola Solutions. Uh, that's pretty much all the time we have for today. Make sure and, and tune in next week, uh, Friday at 2 o'clock Eastern time. For um, We're going to have, let's see, it's going to be the follow-up episode to the Motorola Solutions uh, Safety Reimagined. Uh, we've got a new product coming out next week that we're going to be announcing. So I've, I've already pre-scheduled pre, uh, my time with the uh, the the safety reimagined guys to uh, be able to bring that out to you. So we look forward to that. I really appreciate you all taking the time out of your Friday afternoon to, uh, to join me and to learn with me and to talk about this stuff. I hope you have a great weekend and a great uh, end of February and we'll see you next week. Thanks a lot.